morning, Valley Farm family. Welcome back to another episode of The Farm. If you're new here, you are most welcome. Please consider subscribing if you haven't already and also turn your notification bells on not to miss out on any episodes of The Farm. And of course, to all our returning subscribers, thank you so much. We really appreciate you guys so much. Asante sana and karibuni to Value Farm. We really appreciate you guys so much for the massive support and love and for all our customers who have bought animals from us. You guys are amazing. Thank you so much for the feedback as well. Everyone who has really taken animals from us really gives us feedback and I really appreciate and good feedback by the way. Positive feedback from the pigs, goats. They feel like, you know what? We've really given them what we always preach on the channel. Thank you so much. Yeah, so today it's another day. The sun is out, really bright. But of course, the rainy season is not ending. I don't know what is really happening. By December, most times in Uganda, it is always, you know, hot. But now it is still raining. But we, don't, we are not complaining. This is part of life, part of farming as well. But I wanted to really share with you a few updates of the farm and some of the activities that are happening today at the farm. I know you can hear from the background, the sheep are making noise, it's time for them to go out. But with our routine checks, there are a lot of animals at the moment, so we need to always make sure all the animals are checked. So we were checking the, the, the doper sheep and they were the last to be checked, that's why they're still inside. And there's a lot of activities that we are trying to do. There are some lambs that we need to also tail dock as well because we do that for the doppers. So I wanted to share this with you as well because it's one of the activities that we do here. And for those who have already seen the doper sheep without the tails, I'm going to show you the procedure so that you can learn from it. You can see how we are doing it. For those who are buying maybe doppers from us and you, yours also reproduce from wherever they are and you're thinking of docking, what you're required to do, what you're supposed to be doing, let's go and do this together so that you can learn something. And of course, other things will be coming along the way. Guys, let's go. Hi, David. You're most welcome. See this lamb here. How old is this lamb? Three weeks. Huh? Three weeks. What? Guys, this is not even a month. Are you serious, David? Guys, you can see. This is just three weeks. And we do this, we do the tail docking at, at what age? At three weeks? Yeah. Oh, two and, uh, weeks, two to three weeks there. Three weeks. Mm. Sometimes uh, some lambs are born tiny or small. Mm. So for those ones, we give them time and one lamb. Yes. That's when you Docking them. Yeah, because sometimes mm. it is also, it's a stress actually. Okay. It's painful, it stress to the animal. So it needs when their body condition is okay. It's okay, that's when you do the tail docking. So today we are doing a rubber band tail docking. We're going to use a rubber band. Yes. Because there are two methods. Mm -hmm. There's a method whereby we use a rubber band. Mm. I can show them. It's right here. Yeah, it's elastic. <laughs> it's so elastic. Yeah. With this rubber band, and there's a method whereby uh, we we tend to cut off these things. Using what? A knife. That's painful. So painful. And then uh, you, can, you can cut it and uh, there is no control bleeding. Okay. So, and then again, it has some infections later on, mm. which can, tetanus can come can in. Can come in, yeah. Then, uh, like bacterial infections mm. can really cause damage to, yeah. to the lamb. So this is the best option Even right here. The best. It's coated with some powder, mm. it's an antibiotic. Oh. So, yeah, you see they are like, like whitish. Yeah, it's whitish. Mm. So it's an antibiotic. Yeah. And how long does it take to fall off? In two weeks, the tail will be off. Okay, nice. Mm. That's really amazing. Yeah. So let's do the job. I saw you with the... Yeah. Hey, it's right there. It's called a rubber band applicator. A rubber band applicator. Yeah. <laughs> you can do it. Ah, David, I'm not going to do this. Yeah. Kalengo, come. Sometimes, like our lamb here, these are male. Mm. So this one, even if we take it a bit, a, a little bit, higher, a little like towards the inside, there's no effect. There's no effect. Or even a bit lower, there's no effect. Mm. For the females, we tend to create some good space 
from the from the body. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Such that during mating, it's easy for the male. Yeah. Okay. Mm. We're just going like that. Isn't it painful? It is painful. It's loud, it's loud dog. Mm. Then the most important thing again is uh, don't push it so much. So much too. Yeah. Sometimes we will we'll realize that when it is pushed too much to the spinal cord here, mm. it brings paralysis to these limbs. Limbs, yeah. Yeah. Wow, so just like that. So it's going to stay there for like two weeks? Two weeks will be off. Then it will be falling off. Yeah, and then it falls off with the rubber. Okay. So what is the real advantage of docking this nail? Tells docking it. for sheep. Uh, Health-wise, uh, we have some. Uh, we have, we have, you see, it controls soiling. Soiling is when uh, the, the, when they, excre- when they ex- excrete, mm. there's a, uh, you find that some waste is left in here. Mm. Then after, if, if this tail is not docked, you see, it, it, will be it, it hides it. Mm. So they accumulate. Mm. It forms uh, some kind of a uh, uh, larva of flies mm. that later on become uh, great wounds and becomes uh, and bring diseases. Okay. Uh, mm. uh. Wow. Then again, the other one is the aesthetic. Mm. They look good without tails. Without? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I remember the time we brought these doppers here and most people were really asking us what kind of sheep are those ones without tails? Because in Uganda we rarely dock our sheep, yeah, yeah. the local yeah, sheep. Local so sheep. the doppers, yeah. everyone was really amazed to see that, you know what, they didn't have tails and they felt that it was just so weird. For, for, for the doper, you tend to, they tend to appear very funny with the tails. Mm. Their tails are not, they are not fatty like for the local sheep. Like the local sheep. And then they are not short. So mm. theirs are long. Mm. Yeah. Okay, that's amazing. But guys, I'm still amazed if I stand like this and show them this dog, this lamb here. Just three weeks. Hey, how you see? And they are very, very strong. This at only three weeks. You can imagine the genetics. That's why we say that when you take such such animals to your farm and improve your sto- your flock, it is something for you for, to benefit from. So look at this one, the growth rate. Imagine when it reaches like maybe six months. six months, it's really ready. It's ready for mating. For mating and all that. And also go to reputable farms and get the right genetics so that you can be able to breed with. Not every farmer that tells you that, oh, I have doppers, may it have the quality. But at least when we went to Kenya, we went for the most, for, you remember when we were in Kenya? Like we went to the reputable farms, farmers, farmers that are registered with the stud book of Kenya. Breeding Association, yeah. that's why we went to. Dopa Breeders Association. Uh, yes, that's why we went to. And of course, all the, the, the sheep that we bought from them were registered that side and they were known. So we can easily trace where we got these dopers from. Yeah. That is the beauty about it. And of course, those who have really already bought from us, thank you so much. I hope you guys, you know, can also learn something, one or two, from what we are doing right here. We shall be bringing for you more updates so that you can learn from. Even the treatment plans and all that, we shall definitely bring for you so that you can also be equipped with the knowledge on how to take care of these doppers. These doppers right here survive highly on drier areas compared to wet areas, but this can survive. They are really very, very good animals. Yes. So, guys, let's continue with the tail docking because we have like how many? Around six. Six of them that we need to dock. All right, let's. And we release these ones there. They're crying.
we are right here the sun is really so hot as you can really see but we are really so happy at least the grass is getting drier as well and this really helps us with the goats going out in the field to graze as well as you can see in the background right here we are really utilizing the sheep the dopper sheep to to graze around the compound because you know with the doppers they are low grazers so they always feed on the ground so this is for them if you have your compound out there that like the compound keepers they help with the with keeping the compound clean as well because they they really eat the lower lower grass i was talking to one of the person who is taking care of this sheep so he has to take them to the field to make sure that the grass they get is also enough then of course they are going to have water available for them to drink so that is basically it then of course we also have salt that they always that helps them to eat and drink more in their pens so most times when they come back for for lunch they put them back in their pens that is when they lick the salt you know it really helps them a lot with the um, with the feeding as well we also have this other salt that they lick the lick salt that helps with the lactating mothers that we bring i'll definitely show you the b-roll for them that is really very very helpful unfortunately in uganda i think we always buy this from container village it's quite expensive because the last time that i inquired about the lick salt from container village they were asking for around 150,000 just for a bus is it a bucket of 20 kgs yes 20 kgs which is really quite expensive so if you're really a beginner farmer it may be very expensive for you to afford but when we asked from Kenya, because I wanted to ask for alternatives, you know, to cut costs, to make sure that we get something that is really right. And of course, with this leak salt, you don't know where they're coming from, their companies, because we always tell you that there are duplicates here. You can't be sure of what you're really buying, but that is part of farming. Sometimes you try, it really works out. Sometimes it doesn't. So when I asked from Kenya, they were asking for less money. I think they were asking for 20, 20 kgs. They were just asking for around 50,000 Uganda shillings. So you can really see the difference. So there is a profit of like 100,000, which doesn't really make sense. But I hope really farmers out here can really reduce the prices for us so that this can be affordable because it's really good for our goats, especially for the lactating mothers, for milk production as well. So those are some of the things that, some of the challenges that we face as farmers here when you're going to purchase things that you need for the animals, for the goats, the sheep, it is really very, very difficult to get them easily and also the expense of it as well. So you find that someone is not just offering what, what is best for the animals and you go for the cheaper options that are available. But anyways, enough of ranting here and there, but I wanted to just share with you guys right here. But in case you also have anything, maybe any recommendations of where we can buy good salt, good lick salt for our goats, leave your comments down below so that we can also hear from you, so that we can also get access to this, so that other farmers who are really watching these videos can also get access to the lick salt out there yes that is basically it so i was still doing more rounds around the farm because there's a lot that is really happening actually we have a few goats that we are taking back home with us you know but these are the castrates of course you know when you castrate your goats these are for meat but we had some that of course did not make it to our breeding program so those are the ones that we castrate when they're really very young so we have enough castrates here that we take to the butchers we take also for our own consumption so we have a little celebration at home and we are taking a few goats that is an advantage of a farmer as long as you're a farmer you can't starve at least you can always pick from your heart something to eat and survive which i'm really very happy at least we are not going to spend money buying for the function yeah it's just by the way guys i'm just teach, i'm just telling you guys the beauty of being a farmer out there for the animals already in the field we can't have an opportunity to see them at the moment but it is just what it is at the moment guys i wanted to just share with you so that you can get to know about it yeah so the ones we are taking for slaughter they already weigh around 25 to 30 kilograms and these are really young ones you can see from the background they're a little younger as well and the meat is a little tender as well so
you really enjoyed this episode please give us a thumbs up if you liked or learned something from this episode as well and if you, in case you have questions here and there please leave your comments we are here to really answer your questions on the comments as well and of course for experienced farmers if you have anything to say feel free to leave your comments down below but really appreciate you guys so much if you've watched up to this point and of course if you haven't checked out our social media platform please go to instagram that is value farm ug facebook is value farm tiktok is also value farm go see behind the scenes and also learn something but really appreciate you guys subscribe like and share till next time bye